Hello folks and welcome to the channel or welcome back and we are now in between Christmas and New Year's Eve and I have a couple of days of leave so maybe it's a good time to start doing some work on the MGB GT and this is merely cosmetic work. The MGB GT that we have here is made very light because it's competing in the GT Triumph class so therefore you don't want to have a heavy car. You don't have a lot of horsepower on the engine around 160 on this car Therefore, you want to have a very good weight power ratio. And that is why a lot of the parts on this car, like the fenders, are all made out of polyester. This is a magnet and you can see it doesn't stick to it. If I put it here to the side where the roof is, then of course the magnet will fit. The doors are still made out of metal, but we did lighten them up by drilling these big holes. And you can see with the magnet that sticks to it. And that's true also for the skin of the door. We kept those metal. It provides a little bit better protection. The front valance and the front fenders, they are also made out of uh, polyester, which is making the car again even lighter. Uh, but it makes it also more vulnerable to cracks because polyester is, well, it's fairly strong, but it tends to crack uh, rather quickly. It's not gonna bend like you have with metal. And the back hatch is also made out of polyester and you can see some kind of a discoloration here and that is just because I got rid of this blue-green line stripe that we had over the car because I didn't like it anymore. This is going to be repainted uh, with actually a orange line um, just to change colors a bit. And the hatch and the bonnet are typically held in place with these quick release parts so you can take off the whole thing very quickly. And these are quick release pins, so you can just pull them back and then you can lift off the whole hatch. Now, the bonnet is also made out of polyester and this is not your MGB GT bonnet, this is actually an MGC bonnet, you can see that on the bump that we have there. It's also made out of uh, polyester and it's with quick releases. And the problem with this bonnet was that it actually flew off. It broke the hinges and it came off completely. So now we will have to fix this. The reason that the bonnet uh, flew off the car was just because of these locks. Now these locks, as you can see, are kind of spring-loaded. When they get older, they lose that tension and then it happens that it moves backward or people forget to lock it and then this slides backwards due to the vibrations and now the bonnet is loose and the bonnet can actually flip open. And this is what happened with this car. So what I'm going to do now is to drill a hole through this and then put this kind of a pin through it, this hairpin, so right through there. And that way it won't be able to move back anymore and I don't really worry about this part anymore. Now I got real lucky that this didn't happen during actually a race or a track day, but it happened during transport. So I must have forgotten to lock it or whatever it came loose. And this metal part right here, that's the part that was attached to the bonnet and these rivets broke loose. Uh, so now I just need to disconnect this and I already unlock the bolts and um, we're going to straighten this up and put it back onto the bonnet or the hood for the Americans I think. Not quite sure who calls it a bonnet and who calls it a hood. Now this is the place where this bracket used to be that connects to the hinge uh, for the bonnet and you can see that all the rivets, the top has uh, broken off. So the thing to do now is to drill all these out and then straighten this piece of metal because this is slightly bent now and then we're going to put it back up with new rivets and then there's some more work to be done on the bonnet because the bonnet took quite a hit when it flew off. Now. As you can see, we have some cracks happening here on the bonnet and uh, I had to peel off the stripe that was here in the middle to get to all the parts. So now we're going to sand all this down and repair it. Now the backside is okay, uh, so it didn't go all the way through. That is good. So, but still we need to fix up 
uh, this surface and we'll have to respray the bonnet. And here we have some more damage on the bonnet that needs to be repaired. Also on the edges you can see that it's scraped so all this needs to be filled up with polyester and then sand it down properly so we can give it a proper paint uh, job. And in the back you can actually see that we also have some uh, work to be done because this polyester right here is, is, is really loose so we want to straighten that up. We probably will do a cutout and then you know fill it all up again with a new mat, remove the old mat. So the first thing I'm going to do is to fix these hinges. So I'm going to drill out these old rivets and then put some new ones in. Well, it looks like a four and a half will be the right bit. Now I want to make sure that I don't drill all the way through it because I don't want to get through the top skin of the bonnet. So um, I'm going to put a little sticker up and that way I know how deep I can go. And I'm going to use some rivets to put back the hinges onto the bonnet. I think these will be the right rivets. They are long enough, uh, so that should be holding that uh, bracket pretty well. So this will be rock solid. So now it's time to enforce the corner and for that I'm going to use a couple of polyester mats that we will place in a layered approach, about four of them. That should be good enough but before I do so I need to make sure that the uh, surface is clean so it attaches uh, pretty good. So. <laughs> Now I'm roughing this up with about the grid 60. I'm going to use some polyester laminating resin uh, together with some um, hardener and uh, the ratio is 2 to 100 and then we'll put these mats uh, to enforce that corner that we just cleaned up. So um, let me just fill this up to the level it needs to be and that might be not all that easy because it's a bit clogged up I think. It's thick. All right. Now uh, this is preconditioned hardener and that should be enough. Now I don't have a lot of time to finish this off. About 20 minutes and then you're done. So you got to work real fast with this. All right. So let's put some of that in. And that is not a lot. This is just a little bit of hardener. It's like 2% and that should be it. Oh, maybe a little bit more. Yep. And now let's mix it. All right, so now I'm going to prepare the mats. 
and I'm just going to pour it on there to begin with and then the rest we'll put onto the uh, bonnet itself. And you really want to wear gloves for this and ideally you would wear a mask um, but then I cannot talk to you. That would not be good. I really want to soak it before we, oops, before we put it on. This side should be good. Let's put some up here as well. Especially here. Very sticky stuff. Now this stuff is about uh, 20 minutes of open time. So that is not a lot of time you have to finish that. Now we can let this dry and then we clean that up and then this corner is done and then we need to do the other side of the bonnet uh, uh, to get it ready for painting. This is really cured so all we need to do now is to clean it up a little bit and then we can paint it. Especially this area we need to clean up. Now this doesn't have to be all that pretty because that's all at the inside, but still, you know, a little bit of cleaning up doesn't hurt. need to make a little hole here so for that I'm going to use this bit it's about
uh, three millimeters. So that should be more than strong enough. The bonnet at the inside is now complete and almost ready to go back onto the car, but we still have to fix the top side, including these metal brackets that we riveted onto the bonnet uh, with five large rivets and a washer underneath. And this is pretty solid and that will hold the bonnet very well. So now it's time to flip it over and start cleaning up the other side or repairing the other side because here we still have a little bit of work to be done. All right. So we're going to start by removing these uh, locks here and uh, I just need to drill out these rivets. There are about three of them. The problem with this one is that the steel part uh, which is the middle of the rivet is still in it. So that's going to be a bit difficult to drill in. But all right, it came out. The next thing I want to do now is to get all the paint off. And in fact, it's not just the paint. What you see here is the gel coat coming off. It doesn't really help if you leave that on there and just put some polyester on. You really need to clean this up because if it's loose, it's loose. In fact, this might need a little bit of polyester, to be very honest. So I might pour some on there. Now here, you can still see the gel coat underneath the paint. See, if I take the paint off, this is the gel coat underneath. Um, so that's good. But still, all the paint which is loose, you really should go off. Now I have one area where the gel coat has let go and the polyester mat is now visible, as you can see here. So this uh, I'm gonna fill up now, first of all, with liquid polyester. The other areas are less of a problem. The paint has let go from the actual gel coat, so that is okay. We don't need to worry too much about it. Now all the little scratches that we have on them, we need to grind them out a little bit and fill them up. So I made a little bit of raisin that we will pour onto that. I've been sanding down the bonnet with a grit 220 uh, just to make it rough enough for the primer. But in certain areas where we have to put some polyester putty up, I'm going to sand it down with a grit 80. And now all this is still dry sanding, uh, but once the putty is up, then at the end we'll do the wet sanding. So I always like to use a sanding block uh, because that seems to me the smoothest uh, way to do it. Now I'm going to do this a little bit extra with a grid 80, so the uh, polyester putty uh, will really uh, attach well to it. If you do it with a grit which is too fine, then you're not going to have a good adhesion of the putty itself. So now it's time for me to put the putty up, the polyester putty. And I'm always using a good brand for that, uh, but of course uh, I'm not making a commercial for this specific brand. You have to mix it with some hardener, and then I have two spatels as I call them. One actually to put the putty onto the bonnet and the other one to scoop it out of the pot here. And I'm always mixing this on a piece of paper. 
and that way you can work uh, quite clean. Don't make too much of it because this stuff is getting hard fairly fast. So I'm going to start with the front part here and fill that whole area up. I might have to do it in several layers, although it's not that thick. Um, but we'll see, uh, because sometimes when you put it up, you get some unevenness and then you might want to do it again for a second time. And the putty that I'm using is actually black putty. Um, pretty good stuff. little swirl of this hardener and then we're going to give it a good mix. Now I know these putties they come in all kind of colors but somehow I always like the black one. Unless I'm working on a car that has a dark color or black color You really need to mix it well, otherwise you're going to get wet spots and it won't dry out. So the bonnet looks a little bit like a cow now, but um, I'm going to let it dry and uh, let it cure and then we're going to send it down with a grid 80. We may have to apply a second coat on it to get the unevenness that might still be there out and then sand it again. Then I might apply a fine uh, putty filler, uh, which is very fine for the very small scratches. And then we're going to sand it down with a grit 400, but it's going to be wet sanding. In fact, we're going to sand down the whole bonnet with a grit 400 wet. And then we're going to clean it up and then it's ready for its base paint and this is going to be a high built surfacer that we're going to put on it that's going to dry fairly fast and after that we're going to send down again the surfacer and then we put the final white uh, paint up so it's still a couple of steps away before this bonnet will be finished at least if you want to do it right so i've been rubbing it down with a grit 80 uh, so now I'm, everything is more or less smooth I'm going to clean the bonnet uh, with some thinner or degreaser. Now I'm going to put some very fine putty onto the surface where I need to put it because I can still feel some unevenness here and there. Now this stuff dries very fast. It's also very fine. Now this stuff, you cannot apply it very thick. This is supposed to be a very thin coat. So the fine putty has now dried up, so now it's time to wet sand it and I'm going to use a grit 400 for that. So let me sand this whole bonnet and then when I'm done we're going to put the high built surface around it. So the bonnet has now been sanded down with a grit 400 and now it's very smooth. So uh, I'm going to prepare now my primer, uh, which is a high built primer. And then we're going to spray it and then we're going to let it dry again. But I still need to clean up a few areas because uh, I had a small unevenness here, which I still have to fill up. And then uh, we can paint. I already prepared to paint uh, inside the house and I don't think the wife or the girlfriend uh, will be too happy because this is uh, smelling a little bit but it's too cold in the barn and I have no heating in the workshop so 
you know. Okay. Yeah, I mean, that should be more than enough for the bonnet. Okay. So we're going to give it a try, but before we do so, I'll put my mask up because this is nasty stuff. I'm sorry guys, I already started painting it and I didn't know the camera was not on. But alright. The high build primer is now on the bonnet and I'm just going to let it dry for another hour or so and then we can sand it down again with the grid 400 but very slightly because I see here and there some marks that I rather don't see but okay this is not a showroom car this is a race car if it was a showroom car I would pay far more attention to it but still if you do the job you might as well do it right. So I'm going to have dinner now and uh, meanwhile I let it dry and then when we come back we put the final coat up. And I really apologize that I didn't show you on how I started painting it. I thought I had the camera on but I did not. So the primer has dried up and I already have sanded it down again with a grit 400. So now I'm going to wash it down and then we're going to degrease it and then finally we're going to paint it uh, with white paint. And as they say, uh, painting is only 10% of the job. All the rest is preparation work. And this has been quite a bit of work. So I've prepared the paint in the house uh, because it's a little bit cold in the barn. And it's important that the paint is having the right temperature. So around 20 degrees is a good temperature for the paint. And now let's pour it in and um, start painting. I always use a zift as you can see because that makes uh, spraying a bit easier so you never get any obstructions on the nozzle. So the first thing I'm going to do is to set my gun right. That looks about right. So let's start. Oh no, no, the fuse blew. So, the fuse blew guys, so uh, I have to continue in the dark like this. So let me see if I can get uh, things going again. So, um, we had a small problem with the fuse, but that's sorted out meanwhile. So folks, we have come to the end of this video, and as you can see, the bonnet is now nicely painted. It's going to look real good on the car. We're still going to paint a bright orange line in the middle of it, also on top of the roof and in the back of the car, but that's going to be for another video. Tomorrow we'll put the hinges up and then I'll put the bonnet back onto the car. But for now, this is it. I hope that you enjoyed it as much as I did, and I'll see you in my next video. Bye-bye.